Nancy, you and I are obsessed by trying to know what the world is really about, science, philosophy, theology. We each have our different mixes. Uh, since we began to talk almost two decades ago, uh, I've noticed the increasing importance of emergence as a mechanism for explanatory uh, um, analysis and exp explanat with, with explanatory powers. Uh, you've focused on this. I'd like to understand currently what the state of emergence is and, and, and what are the categories of it. Yes, um, the emergentist movement started in the early 20s of the 19, 1920s. And uh, it was presented as an alternative on the one hand to a mechanistic account of biology and on the other account to a vitalist. There has to be a vital spirit or a vital fluid or something mm -hmm. added to get life out of inorganic matter. But it was uh, very unclearly defined. And I, I've told my students that um, a technical term in philosophy is spooky. <laughs> and some of the definitions of emergence back then I would, mm. I would designate as spooky. But uh, then the positives, positivist movement came along, squashed that all out with its reductionism. But the topic of emergence has re-emerged, <laughs> if I may say. And uh, at first, I wouldn't use the word because it had so many connotations that would just drive biologists nuts. Uh, but a few philosophers and scientists in uh, just the very recent past, maybe going back 10 years, have produced understandings of emergence that are clear, and uh, I find them compelling. And uh, you can look at emergence in two ways, either from the uh, knowledge epistemological side and say that something is emergent if we can't explain it from below. Mm -hmm. But we also know that there are so many things that we can't explain or predict from below for other reasons, like we can't take fine enough measurements or whatever. So the epistemological definitions of emergence are just not helpful. What is helpful is uh, talk about causal emergence or emergence of uh, more and more complex systems. And uh, there are a few philosophers uh, who I believe are clear enough in their definitions of what counts as emergence and have a complex enough understanding of, uh, for instance, how a cell can self-organize. And uh, this, uh, in fact, uh, requires uh, emergence of a, a very simple sort, like um, turbulence in water, which isn't very interesting. Then there's uh, emergence of causal properties that the aggregate wouldn't have, that it only has because its parts are organized in such a way that they only are the parts they are because of the uh, functional role that they play in the system. It sounds circular. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, my teacher, Paul Feyerabend, said yeah. that uh, new ideas start out with a group of people talking nonsense amongst themselves, and pretty soon it turns into sense, and it's your next scientific revolution. And so that's Well, he it. was a character. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that that is what has happened with the concept of emergence. All right, so let me try to un understand it because, um, the, to me, the fundamental question of emergence is that, in principle, is it possible to explain it reductively? For example, we know water is, is liquid and turbulent and all of that, and it's hydrogen and oxygen in a certain combination. And the two gases, if you, if, if you gave me a canister of oxygen and, and, and hydrogen, and I tested it in all the different ways, then you could say, if you put them together, do you think you'd get this problem? I have no way to do that. And so there's an emergent property. That. You couldn't predict it, but, but here's the point. When you really know quantum chemistry, uh, and you really bet it can be predicted. You can now reduce mm. the, 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 this emergent property of water by understanding quantum chemistry in a very sophisticated way with the angle of the, the bonding and all that. You can show the, the concept of liquidity. So, so, so that's kind of a, 
that's emergent, but it is ultimately reducible. So is the emergence you're talking about ultimately reducible? No, and in this fact... This is fundamental, if I that's would, true. I would say But I that, challenge that. I would say that the concept of emergence is diametrically opposed to the concept of reductionism. And what's interesting is causal reductionism. And once you put together a system that's complex enough and uh, organized enough... Uh, you get to the point where you can't explain what the system as a whole can do simply on the basis of the components it's made Even of. Even if you know every conceivable piece of information about those components. Well, um, uh, my uh, former co-author George Ellis writes about a decoupling right. of the organismic uh, level of reality from the chemical level of reality. And so uh, an emergent or complex system uh, needs to be understood in terms of its functional components and the way they're being a part of that system makes them the functional components that they are. I used a really gross um, example in class one time. I said, consider the circulatory system in a mammal. Take it out of the body and lay it out on the table and... It's mm -hmm. not a circulatory mm -hmm. system anymore. Um, okay, uh, so, but if, 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 if in the circulatory system, in the body, and if I could, if I could know the, uh, the Schrodinger wave equation for every single particle and force in that, uh, the idea is that your definition of emergence that would still be impossible to predict. Yes, because of that decoupling. When you get to the level of life... So if that's true, that's such a fundamental aspect of reality. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 is, it is so powerful. I, I'm just honestly not convinced that that's the case. I, I gave a simple example of, 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 of water, which seems emergent, but which with deep understanding you can, you can predict. But, but that's what I, why I talk about this low, lowest level as not being interesting. It's when you get to a higher level, uh, life, where you can't understand a living uh, anything without understanding the function that its parts play in the system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's being relatively self-contained but open to energy and matter from outside um, and becomes, uh, as you go up the hierarchy of, of organic beings, uh, more and more capable of self-direction. Mm. 